Steve Evans, quick look back over the week. I saw something on television the other day. Chris Foy analysing the decision at Derby last week and um, coming up in your favour. How frustrating is this becoming? Yeah, it's, um, I discussed it with the head of referees on Monday and uh, Mike is a, a very honest guy. Um, of course, when it gets to the level when we have the likes of Chris Foy who neutrally, independently assesses things in clear and obvious penalty is the answer, clear and obvious. And the standards of the referee should get that. And let me be clear about this. The young referee at Bolt, uh, sorry, at Derby had a very good game. I thought he was one of the best of the season. But as I said to him, there's one big decision in the game. Not a silly booking, not, not a challenge. Not, these things happen and referees get them right and they get them wrong. There's one big key match decision. And he called it wrong. And if you just go back a few days, we had some big key match decisions go against us. Bristol Rovers, more importantly again for any. And as the head of referees did not deny when I said, are we top of the table when it comes to email apologies? Are we top of the league? Because we're not top of the league and you know, we're not going to never get to top of the league with these decisions. But, but, but Mike just did a, a real dignified silence. He knows we, well, he actually said it. You've had a terrible run this season of big decisions going against you. Again, not questioning the integrity of the referees. I'm sure young, young Reeves, they'll um, all go into better things as a referee, but he said to me afterwards he would hot if he had got it wrong. He must have been hotting a lot Sunday Monday, because we were. Um, but you'll go into better things, but just get the big ones right. We, we, things in the middle of the park, 60 yards from your goal can happen. Get the big decisions right. But it's just another email. It's another statistic. We lost the game, and we've got to try and bounce back and win again. But how frustrating is it? Because... If you look at it and say, OK, it's a penalty, you might not score the penalty, but the opportunity's there, and you would have, certainly have more points than you've got now, and look at the league table, how important and how frustrating is it? Yeah, listen, it, it, it goes on throughout the season, and we, we felt a real injust this season, a real unjust. You know, we know the FA Cup last year, it stopped because of real unjust decisions by a poor referee. And then and you go into this season, and it, and it all comes in a confined period of time, and I think that's sudden and why we've become a bit of a focus at the PGA, PGMOL in, in respect of their sitting there going, big decisions against them against Reading, big decisions against Bristol Rovers going wrong, and a huge decision away at Derby goes wrong. Coincidence? It must be. It must be that these referees just don't see it frustrating. Yeah, you, you know, I've got a lot of hair left, but you can pull it out. And um, But more importantly for the players, because... Our actual run of form shows three defeats and a draw. Our performance is as good as we've played all season. Mm. And I said to the boys, we need to get that little bit of luck to turn for it. Notwithstanding big chances we've missed as well. We should score two big chances at Derby. We should certainly kill the game at Port Vale with two outstanding chances. And against Bristol Rovers, we're 2 0 up, going on five. So against Reading, we had all the play for 95 minutes. So we've got to do more ourselves. But we, we don't ask for a favour from a referee. We don't ask for something that's not a penalty to be given. But it appears to be we get we should have penalties and they're not being given. But at the other end, as we found out at Port Vale, we get punished for, for offences that look half a penalty, if I can say that. Maybe. Maybe we give the decision to the assistant or the, or the referee. We're not talking about that. We're talking clear cut. But, you know, to keep my um, sanity... I've got to drive on believing that those decisions are made with the highest integrity. And I think they are, but you do have minutes of doubt when it's getting as bad as what it's got in the last month of football. What's it about February? Here we are approaching the end of February and it's a very similar scenario to last season. Yeah, very much so. I think I said, um, I think I commented on it last week, I said to you guys in the, in the media and Internally, if, if we left Rochdale in the early March, first few days in March, and we went to Rochdale, if we left there in a play, in a uh, automatic position, we go automatically. If it's the playoff, I think maybe the playoffs. In in time, we'll justify now that we got well beaten at Rochdale by a team that got relegated, but they were terrific on the day. We were poor, but we went on to win promotion, and I and I still believe that we leave Lincoln next weekend, and if we're in or very close to that top group, we'll end up in it. And um, if we get the playoffs, we'll win the playoffs. That's not been 
condescending to other some giants up here in there, some giants. We don't know who's going to go at the top end. I watched a Bolton Wanderers team at Cambridge on Tuesday, been absolutely outstanding, and that's the appropriate word. Portsmouth are absolutely fine. Um, Derby got a great win under us, so there's, you know, and there's, there's Barnsley keep trouble at these ones. We don't know who's going to jump into those automatics, and I think Portsmouth are almost there. I think they're probably six or seven wins away. Um, and who falls below that, there'll be a fight with three or four of them. But um, we've got to make sure we win the fight for that last player place. Next up, Wickham. Obviously, they'll be buoyed by uh, the, the win at Bradford that's taken them to Wembley. Yeah, watched them last night. Second best to Bradford in a lot of areas um, over the 90 minutes. But the one thing you would say, why is the game on? <laughs> if, if you go and watch the footage from the 60s or the... Or the, who can remember the, the Radford goal away at Hereford, you know, at Hereford at Newcastle, I think it was. The, the pitches were just a quagmire, but, I, but I'll tell you what, they've, uh, they've improved considerably. Mm-hmm. I think their, their form in the league is outstanding. Any team that can put five past Peterborough and, and probably could have been more, spoke to Darren Ferguson, it could have been more, um, then you'd think that's a real decent sign. So... They'll come here um, and we've played a very good opponent, but we, we need to be ready to, to produce another good performance, to take the chances we make if and when they come, and just have a referee that, that gives it, I can't say anymore, gives it as he sees it. Just give a penalty if it's a penalty. Do you know what I mean? Or, either way, either, either end of the ball, either end of the pitch. But no, a real tough opponent. We, they've got really, really good players. Obviously, you you won over at Wickham earlier in the season. Plenty said after that game. Is that all blown over? Yeah, listen, it matters your manager and he just bowed up off what was said, what wasn't said. Players did injured, players no did injured, players not being respectful. Listen, it's, it was a real keen, fought, competitive game. It tells you with the scoreline. Um, I've got to Wickham many times over the years. I've got a fantastic relationship with the directors and the people behind the scenes there and a number of the players you know, are, uh, are real good friends of mine, you know, like Big Tavazzoli and that. They're, they're real good guys. Um, I've not got I've not got any problems whatsoever. I'm looking forward to a, a competitive game with a, with a club that's done absolutely brilliant under new manager, young manager, and he's taking his team to Wembley. Mm. He must be immensely proud. How's your squad looking? Obviously, it's been a tough time, lots of games and still lots to come. Yeah, we had a, we had a good competitive game against West Ham on Tuesday over at West Ham. Um, just an array of superstars on their team. So, you know, we put a team out that, of players that needed minutes and we'll have benefited from that. Uh, today, we're largely good to go. There's only young Aaron Presley who's, who's been sick for a day or two. Um, that's just, just a virus. Uh, we expect Aaron back in uh, either today or tomorrow. And then we'll go from there. But we, you know, we've got good options. So we're, we, we lose one or two players to make a change this season. We do have some options. Obviously, looking at the squad, we keep talking about it. You do have to keep ringing the changes. So, one or two players we haven't seen for a while in there as well. How, how do they cope when they're not actually on the pitch? Well, it's easy if they're not fit, isn't it? <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day, "Where's the elite list?" I said, I, "I think he's in the bed next to a physio in the treatment room." Yeah, I had, and um, so he's um, yeah. So there's there's players that said knocks and niggles and been out for a week or two that that we just keep in house. You know we. There's no one more frustrated than the likes of Elliot and Young Kane and Smith and people like that. So we just need to work with them, get them back fit and, um, and get them available for, for whole selection. So we, we love players of that calibre in and around us on our bench or in our starting line-up, but when, when they're not fit, they're not fit. 